Hi. What we have here is that the roots of the equation z cubed minus 8z squared plus 22z minus 20 equals 0 are z1, z2 and z3. And in part a we're given that z1 equals 3 plus i. And what we've got to do is find z2 and z3. And then finally in part b we've got to show on a single argon diagram the points representing z1, z2 and z3. So, if you haven't done this already and want to try it, just pause the video, come back when ready and you can check your work solution against mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now, what we should be familiar with is that if we're given a root, a complex number, which is a root, z1 in this case, which is 3 plus i, then roots of an equation occur as complex conjugate pairs. That means that the other root will be the complex conjugate of this. In other words, 3 minus i. So if z1 equals 3 plus i, then the other root, let's say it's z2, it could be z3, it doesn't really matter, then z2 will be equal to 3 minus i. Now we've got two of the roots and there's only three roots in the solution because it's a cubic equation. So we've got two of the roots which are complex numbers and the other number must be, the other root must be a real number. Okay. So bearing that in mind, let's just take the left hand side of this equation. We'll take the expression on the left which is z cubed minus 8z squared plus 22z minus 20. And this is going to be identical to, and what I'd want to do is factorize this. Now we know that two of the roots now are 3 plus i and 3 minus i. So by the factor theorem it would tell us that z minus 3 minus i, if we subtract 3 and i from both sides here, z minus 3 minus i must be a factor. And if z2 equals 3 minus i, if we were to subtract 3 and add i to both sides, then by the factor theorem z minus 3 plus i must also be a factor. There's going to be three factors and the final factor must be z minus z3. Okay? Because if this ever equals 0, then z minus z3 would equal 0, leading to z equaling z3. Now we've got to find out what z3 is, and the way we can do this is to expand out these two brackets and then compare our result to what we have here knowing that z3 must be a real number. OK, so let's just expand these two brackets. OK, so if we do z times each of the terms here, we get z times z, which is z squared, and then z times minus 3 is minus 3z, and z times plus i is plus iz. Now we'll move on to minus 3. Minus 3 times z is minus 3z, and then minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. And minus 3 times plus i is minus 3i. Now finally, we need to do minus i times z. So that's going to be minus i z. Minus i times minus 3 is plus 3i. And then minus i times plus i is minus i squared. But i squared is minus 1, so you've got minus minus 1, which is plus 1. And all of this is being multiplied by z minus z3. So let's clean up this bracket here. If we group up terms, we're just going to get one z squared term. Then the z terms, we've got minus 3z minus another 3z, that's minus 6z. iz minus iz, well that cancels to 0. And then you've got 9 and the 1 is 10. And finally, minus 3i plus 3i, well that's 0. So that's what this bracket simplifies to.
and we've got this being multiplied by z minus z3. Now we know that z3 is a real number and we should know that the only constant we're going to get is when we multiply 10 then with this real number and it's going to have to be minus 20. So just by looking at this we can see that z3 has got to be a 2. Okay, So we can just finish this off by saying this factorises as z squared minus 6z plus 10 and that's all multiplied by z minus 2. So let's just summarise. We can now solve the equation giving our roots. So when z cubed minus 8z squared plus 22z minus 20 equals 0, we know that we can factorise this. We've done it here. And we know that the roots are z1, which we're told is 3 plus i. Roots occur as complex conjugate pairs. So the next root, let's say it was z2, is going to be 3 minus i. And we were able to work out the real root, z3. It turned out to be 2. OK? So there's our three roots. Now in part b, we've got to show on a single argon diagram then the points representing z1, z2 and z3. So for part b, I can see that there's no negative real numbers here. So I'm going to just have my imaginary axis here. My real axis doesn't have to extend too far into the negative section here. So we'll have that as the real axis. So for z1, 3 plus i, let's just put that in. 3 across, 1 unit up, then you're going to get something like this. I'm going to mark it in with an arrow there, z1, and I'm going to say that that is 3 plus i. You could, if you wanted to, just put a point there and then put the coordinates 3, 1. I'm going to now put in z2, 3 minus i. It's worth noting that, that this is a reflection in the real axis, OK? If you do any complex conjugate of a number, a complex number, it's always a reflection in the real axis of the original complex number. So z2 now is 3 minus i. And the real value, z3, is 2. So that's going to be 2 units along on the real axis. So there's my z3, which is equal to 2. OK?